welcome to an introduction to JT6M. My name's Nige and I'm going to be taking you through this short presentation. In this session I'm going to outline what JT6M is, its principal uses, initial setup and rudimentary operation. By the end of this session I anticipate that you'll be armed with sufficient data to be able to effectively use the mode and the graphical user interface and in so doing increase your enjoyment of the 6 meter and 4 meter bands which can often seem rather lacklustre during the winter months and in between band openings. JT6M is a digital mode, one of a suite of three which was the brainchild of Joe Taylor K1JT. Astrophysicist, graduate of Harvard and winner of the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1993, it was Joe's wish as an enthusiastic amateur to push forward the boundaries of weak signal communication and in 2001 Joe for the first time released the public WSJT which initially contained two modes, one aimed at Earth Moon Earth and the other principally at 2 meter meteor scatter. The following year in June 2002 Joe released a third mode which he called JT6M and this was aimed at 6 meter weak signal communications via ionoscatter and meteor scatter. The mode itself sounds rather like piccolo music being played quickly and not dissimilar to MFSK. JT6M is a 44 tone frequency shift keying modulation system. It utilizes 43 tones for the character set and one tone for the synchronization. It transmits at 21.5 ball, but the user data is actually transmitted at about 14.4 characters per second. Opponents of digital modes often cite WSJT due to the intelligence algorithm which is incorporated in one of the modes, namely JT65. I cannot stress strongly enough that JT6M does not incorporate this intelligence algorithm and it is a straight decoder. A modest station can expect to achieve distances in excess of 1600 kilometers with relative ease. Distances of up to 2250 kilometers are possible when using a more potent setter and occasionally during extreme showers and unusual circumstances distances of up to 2800 kilometers are theoretically possible but extremely rare. JT6M was optimized for 6 meters. Its board rate was selected for its compatibility at that wavelength. However, as it turns out, the mode is also very effective on the 4 meter band, 70 MHz. VHF propagation does possess some interesting characteristics. And although it's not necessary, some knowledge is desirable, as it will help and improve your enjoyment of the use of this particular mode. Meter scatter and ionoscatter on 6 meters are of course the principal mode of propagation which is used with JT6M. However, it is also not uncommon to see the mode used with sporadic E and F2 under marginal conditions. Of course the mode could be used under much stronger conditions also, however for the length of time that it would take to complete a QSO it's probably not worth the effort. JT6M is based on 30 second periods. In other words, one would transmit for 30 seconds and receive for 30 seconds. As such, the timing of your PC clock is quite critical. As it turns out, most MS operators are now using third party software, very often freeware, in order to keep their PC clocks synchronized with atomic clocks over the internet. In order to run JT6M, you will require the following. A radio system, a PC with at least one sound card, an audio interface, 
and a COM port based or VOX based PTT switching system. It is desirable when operating WSJT to employ a dedicated sound card. The reason for this is quite simple. From time to time you hear you've got mail or some other interesting jingle coming down through the radio. Employing a dedicated sound card for WSJT could avoid any embarrassing operating system based messages and sounds coming through your radio. You've got mail. Most commonly, when the radio is connected to the computer, it's done through via the audio interface. At the computer end, you normally connect via the line in and line out sockets on your sound card. Experience has shown that many users do try to connect via the microphone socket and although it does work for quite a number of users, there are probably quite a lot more who have found that the levels are excessive using the mic socket, therefore it is most desirable to use line in and line out. There is a wealth of commercial RIC control interfaces available and many of these do indeed contain their own dedicated sound cards and employing such a system as this can very often simplify the entire connecting process. If you do decide to build your own interface, please give some consideration to isolation between the circuits. An opto-isolation or a transformer isolation between the radio and the computer is really very desirable in order to prevent any unwanted audio and RF feedback loops developing which could potentially damage some of your equipment. As we come to the end of this section, one final point I would like to pursue is that of duty cycle. This is something often overlooked by newcomers to JT6M. Let's take an example. Imagine for a moment, if you will, that you are using your normal 100 watt rated radio on SSB. If you have a PEP meter, you're probably very accustomed to seeing the output peaking at around 100 watts, if you're lucky. If you have an average meter, then it may be a little lower than this, and perhaps you would expect to see 100 watts should you whistle down the microphone. Now, consider this radio is connected to your PC and running WSJT modes. Due to the high ampli amplitude generated, if it's set up correctly, you could now be seeing your radio running 100 watts for 30 seconds every 60 seconds. That's 30 seconds per minute at 100 watts output. Is your radio capable of running at that power? Is there sufficient cooling? Does your amplifier have sufficient capacity or cooling to cope with this mode? Please give very serious consideration as you will find that WSJT modes are extremely intense. Cooling and proper capacity. In an effort to keep this presentation more manageable, it's been broken into bite sized chunks. In part two, we're going to explore setting the levels in WSJT. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.